Halloween STEM challenges. Today we're going to be talking about treat tops. The initial premise was this was built around a fictional character named Mr. Jones. He gets sick at Halloween, but he wants to make sure that he's able to give the Halloween treats to the trick-or-treaters without getting them sick. So he builds a treat toss. One of the great things about this is even if you're not allowed to do Halloween activities, this is just tossing candy and that's good for any time of the year. Let's take a quick look at materials and the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You can click on the title now to see the cycle explained. One of the most important things for setup here is to make sure your students are aware of your safety expectations. So you are going to be launching candy, so you want to make sure that you're doing that as safely as you can. So one thing you can do is make sure students know when it's okay to test and when it is not okay to test, which direction they're allowed to test toward, and that sort of thing. Students can take their inspiration from slingshots, catapults, trebuchets. If you have younger students, then they probably aren't quite ready for this level of design, and that's perfectly okay. Um, most second graders will be okay with a slingshot or just um, a very simple lever. I've actually done this with first graders before, um, but in order to modify it, I just sort of showed them the basic layout that if you put two popsicle sticks together and you put a marker or something in between it to act as a fulcrum, then um, you'll be able to build a launcher. Now, usually we don't want to be that directive with students, but even the second graders might need a little bit of help there. And you don't need to worry because even just showing them that basic setup, where they place the fulcrum, what they use as the fulcrum, um, what they end up building as like a little candy basket will vary the designs quite a bit. So in addition to setting your safety expectations ahead of time, you're going to need to make basically two choices. What kind of candy are you going to be testing? And are you going to be testing for just distance or accuracy or both? As far as the candy goes, I like to have a variety, but you can choose to just have one type. Um, candy corns and candy pumpkins are great. And I've also used Hershey's Kisses, Mini Twix bars, that kind of thing. Having a variety of candy gives you a couple of different options. One is to allow students to test the different candies, determine which one works best with their design, and then use just that one type of candy for their final results and measurements. And the second option it gives you is a way to make it a little bit more challenging to increase the difficulty. So you can require that students test each and every one of the candies and that their design has to work with each and every one of the candies. Shall we give them a try? That one hit the ceiling. According to the criterion constraints, this design actually is not complete yet because we wanted a design that doesn't require Mr. Jones to touch the candy because he would then transmit his germs to the trick-or-treaters. But if we had built a little um, candy basket or something there, then we could test it like so. Actually, I can move my finger away and it might work. So this one is a slingshot design. Now you might decide that you want to disallow slingshots um, if you're you know, very worried about students aiming at each other. But again, if you set up your safety expectations, it shouldn't be an issue. I'm so tempted to aim this toward the camera to try to get an incredible shot, but I just barely have enough good judgment not to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and aim it this way. That was a pretty good shot. So this one is obviously a natural fit for following up with studying levers and other simple machines. If you want to find out more, this is available as a resource in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, and it includes extra modifications, student handouts, cross-curricular connections, and more, so check it out. There never seems to be enough time to do all the things you'd like to do. I've got you covered with this challenge resource. It contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the hard parts are already done. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for grades two through eight, links to my STEM challenge professional development videos to help you get the most from each challenge and the treat toss materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions, which will be especially helpful if you need to prove this is not just a Halloween activity. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students and treat toss targets if you choose to test for accuracy. 
For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find data gathering handouts and a set of group discussion questions. Also included is a non-Halloween version of the handouts that you can use any time of the year. In the extension handouts, you'll find math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Halloween and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. Hope you enjoyed learning about treat toss and it really is good for any time of the year. Make sure you like and subscribe. Next week we have our conclusion of the Halloween STEM challenges. It's week five of five, Ghosts in the Graveyard. See you next time.